Good morning. How certain is the fall of Edom? Our reading today is Jeremiah chapter 49, verses 14 to 22. I have heard a message from the Lord, and an ambassador has been sent to the nations. Gather together, come against her, and rise up to battle. For indeed, I will make you small among nations, despised among men. Your fierceness has deceived you, the pride of your heart, O you who dwell in the clefts of the rock, who hold the height of the hill. Though you make your nest as high as the eagle, I will bring you down from there, says the Lord. Edom also shall be an astonishment. Everyone who goes by it will be astonished and will hiss at all its plagues. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighbors, says the Lord, no one shall remain there, nor shall a son of man dwell in it. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the floodplain of the Jordan against the dwelling place of the strong, but I will suddenly make him run away from her. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he has taken against Edom and his purposes that he has proposed against the inhabitants of Taman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their dwelling places desolate with them. The earth shakes at the noise of their fall, and at the cry its noise is heard at the Red Sea. Behold, he shall come up and fly like the eagle and spread his wings over Bozrah. And the heart of the mighty men of Edom in that day shall be like the heart of a woman in birth pangs. So how certain is Edom's fall? Well, it's very certain, isn't it? You just listened to Jeremiah's prophetic oracle. Edom here stands for all those who resist God. Edom is being brought to complete destruction because in Jeremiah's prophecy, he's symbolic of all those who choose self over God's ways. Oppose away, take your best shot, you know, act out in God's face. See how that works out. Judgment may not come immediately, but it will come. And it will come with finality. In the end, selfishness and unselfishness cannot coexist. Satan's path and God's path cannot coexist. The creation is not a binary with good and evil always coexisting. That's not the way it is. Good and evil aren't just part of a whole. They don't go together forever. Evil is a very temporary thing. Selfishness can't really coexist with anything. Selfishness is temporary. It's suicidal. It's self-destructive. It's innately self-contradictory. You can't really have it. It's a it puts everything out of sync. It, it cannot stand. It cannot continue to stand. And here in this oracle, Edom stands for this total self-first paradigm. And that will be completely, utterly, totally ended when God is finished. It has no place in a universe of selflessness. It just simply can't coexist. It never could. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we are glad that good will triumph over evil ultimately. We are glad that selflessness will prevail over selfishness ultimately. And this has been allowed, we see, to play out for thousands of years, but now we know we're down there near the end somewhere. Help our lives, Lord, to be a canvas that you can write selflessness on. Help us, Lord, we don't want to be a place that Satan can write his things on. Help us to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Lord, we're glad that good will triumph over evil. We're glad that self will be finally eradicated and we'll all be free and yet we'll want to be seeking the good of others. Oh, thank you for this, Lord. Thank you we can be part of that and for a very long time, eternity, through Jesus, because of what you have done, Lord, you have opened the pathway for us to learn this and be with you in this for all eternity. Thank you for that opportunity, Lord. May not one be missing. We ask, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. So self-love fails utterly. It just simply couldn't be any other way. The complete and total collapse of self-service is inevitable. Complete discontinuation of self-service is certain. And time's almost up. Have a wonderful day.